Susan gracefully grant me this opportunity uh, because uh, originally I got some problem with the visa, so my booking was I rebooking the whole flight, and then that uh, come up with some of the question that I have to fly back tomorrow. So I'm really sorry and thank you for just uh, hanging around with me for another uh, 15 minutes. I'm just going to quickly talk about this paper. So well, there's some Chinese, but I was at the SMU before uh, this March and I moved back to uh, this uh, Sun Yat-sen University in Canton. So if you guys uh, travel to China, you will come to uh, contact me and I can arrange you some seminars. Uh, and this is joint work with Brandon Julio. He's uh, from uh, University of Oregon. He used, at, uh, he used to be at the uh, London Business School. And some uh, actually Tia Cheng and uh, Alex both are my, my PhD students at SMU. So what we are talking in this paper, right? What we really talk about is what happened when Donald Trump took over, okay? So this is essentially the question we are, we're looking at, okay? But uh, uh, it's not in the US context, rather, this is in the Chinese context, so this is a paper about Chinese firms. Uh, what the, the question we're looking at is uh, what happened when uh, a, you know, there is a provincial governor, a new provincial governor took over his power. What will happen to the firms? Okay, that's essentially what we're asking. Okay, so, uh, well, I think after this election, US election, the political uncertainty is certainly you know, people are probably increasingly aware that this is really important, right? Uh, of course, I mean, uh, early works by, by, by my course, uh, Brandon, he published this paper in General Finance. Uh, it's really kind of this influential paper today. They're looking at how the firms uh, making their investment decision prior to the election. So it's a democratic election there, using, certainly using some approach uh, like a predictable, unpredictable outcome, uh, especially like the, the Trump election in the US. It's sort of more of a unpredictable, right? So what do they find is that uh, this type of uh, election presents political uncertainty, right? Because whenever the new leader took over, uh, people have to wait for them to unveil their economic policy, their political agenda. There's a sort of a huge political uncertainty uh, surrounding this uh, election, surrounding these political turnovers, okay? So what their paper using the sort of, you know, if you wanted to theoretically motivate this kind of a real option theory, investment company invest, they needed to, it took time to build, right, consideration. Uh, they found that the corporations, they always defer, they reduce their investment prior to the election, okay? And this is basically the main result of their paper, okay? But what we are looking at is we're looking at the Chinese context because we uh, was talking, discussing with some of the colleagues here. Uh, one of the phenomenon observation in China is the investment, okay? Uh, the investment to GDP ratio, you know, is 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 almost 50 percent this years, in the past in the past few years. Okay, so that also being sort of characterized with a large scale infrastructure investment, large scale corporate investment. Okay, and uh, it's in sharp contrast contrast to the other Asian country. I'm sure even India, right? because uh, you know, the investment uh, is one phenomenon which differentiates China from the rest of the economy, okay? And uh, this is why we, we're focusing on investment, okay? Second is uh, the unique political transition system, all right? Um, well, there's a lot of paper talking about how the politicians are being motivated in China or moving around, okay? So a typical, uh, the evaluation system is that the, the central government, the, what we call the central party level, they go into evaluate uh, politician based on the, uh, their performance, KPI, their KPI. Uh, suppose that if, say, uh, Professor Bong is a, a provincial governor, right, the central level, you know, how they evaluate your performance, typically looking at the GDP, 
of that uh, province, okay? But they're also looking at the kind of investment and some other, you know, issues related to education, living uh, standard, etc. okay? So um, uh, what I think the Michigan and the Chen, you know, uh, they sort of say is that this kind of tournament-based uh, promotion scheme is effective, right? Because um, the politician, they competing for higher rank positions, okay? So what they did is they tried to compete against each other by showing that their KPI is pretty decent. And this most important KPI is the GDP growth. So they're thinking this so far working quite well and then some micro evidence also find that this is the case, okay? They're doing well for GDP, they get promoted, okay? But again, uh, we know that there's also other situation like uh, situation like Bo, right? Bo was uh, in Chongqing. He did well uh, from the number, but he was removed, uh, arrested because of other reasons. Okay, so there's other phenomena, other other things going on. Okay, so uh, well, second uh, institution feature in China's uh, political ar arena is that the, typically the turnover is about four years on the provincial governor level. So this guy took over the office. They know they have four years uh, in between the central government going to send the people to evaluate their performance, okay? So that's the kind of turnover cycle, turnover cycle, okay? And also uh, there's the anecdotal evidence here showing that the, whenever a new governor, a new leader, uh, you know, swears in, they're going to, what they're going to do is they're going to uh, promote economic growth. The easiest way is basically, uh, you know, uh, 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 basically uh, promoting those uh, large scale investment. I mean, even Donald Trump did, right? What Donald Trump announcing he's going to invest in, you know, infrastructure, he's going to uh, encourage the private sector investment, right? Because we know that investment is much easier uh, to encourage, but it's very difficult to motivate the people to consume more. Okay, so that's sort of the, the analog here, okay? So we will see this much, even much more phenomenal in China because the investment, you know, whenever a new governor took, uh, his, uh, took his office, you know, he's going to say, we're going to spend, we're going to invest, okay? That's what typically uh, being, being announced. And, uh, uh, well, the second uh, unique feature, I think, in China is that uh, if you want to test uh, the value of political connection, you know, uh, the unique political setting, I think, in China is uh, the ideal setting, ideal setting. There are a lot of papers, uh, papers done by uh, Faccio, you know, papers done by, um, by T.J. Wang and uh, Joseph Fei, you know, they show that the political connection uh, is a double sword. Okay, on one hand, political connection, the political interference, uh, is uh, uh, adding value for the firm because they're able to allow firm to access cheaper loan, uh, the, uh, the, the, the concession, you know, the tax, etc. But on the other side, they may also destroy firm value because of the interference, because of the, well, you maximizing, uh, you know, private benefits of the polit politicians, etc. So, uh, you know, it seemed to be a really double sort. Okay, uh, so we basically, what we, we hypothesize in this paper, right, following Julian, we say, well, we should also, in a non-democratic election uh, economy, we should, like China, we, uh, we should observe that before the political turnover, uh, the political uncertainty is very, very big, even bigger, right? So we should observe the investment drop prior to the political turnover. But what a, more importantly, we, we're going to say is ex post, after the turnover, we should observe the investment increase, the firm level investment increase, okay? And the cross-sectionally, we should observe that the uh, investment increase more when the politician's incentive to promote GDP growth, promote investment is, is, is stronger. So this, basically, this is our hypothesis, okay? And I think we can just focusing on one graph. I'll show you guys. So this is a basically a graph, basically showing our results. Okay, even though it's very rough. What we observe here is the, the 
uh, using the all listed companies in China, okay, we have uh, state-owned, we have uh, private-controlled uh, firms. Uh, we look at the, the red curve, right? The t equal to zero is the event where uh, at this province, that the company, that province here, there is a, a political turnover. Turnover here, political turnover referring to either the provincial governor uh, is being replaced or the provincial party secretary. So there, uh, again, this is unique in China. It's what we call dual leadership system. You have a prime minister, but you also have party secretary, right? So Xi Jinping is a party secretary, but then uh, Prime Minister Li Keqiang is uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the head of the, of the, of the, the executive team. Okay, so you've got the dual leadership. We're focusing on the political uh, governor, we're focusing on the governor, but we're looking at also the party head, you know, party leaders, what's going on. But what we unique here is uh, the, really the, the private firm, we see that the private firm investment drop, and there is a wedge. First, there is a wedge. Second, the wedge is increasing, right? Surrounding the turnover. That's basically our kind of uh, baseline regression, okay? So there's a, uh, this, uh, this is basically a summary of the, of the turnover. Uh, there are a normal turnover where the, uh, basically, you know, the, the, the governor, is not election, sorry, this is not election, oh, okay, I forgot to mention to you. Uh, it's about the, the, all the provincial leaders are appointed by the central party. Normally, four to five years, that's right. Normally, suddenly, somebody that's right, that's right. Could it be that they just remove you, this, this leader one year, two years, any time, any time, right? So there are what we call the abnormal turnover, uh, getting arrested, getting prosecuted, or just removed without uh, any reason. Normal turnover, they will say, because this guy is going to another post, right, they move into another position, etc. So uh, these are the turnover events, turnover events. Okay, uh, these are the, uh, basically these are the, uh, each province we have this, uh, 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 I mean the, the, the turnover, okay. So what, what, here, this is a summary statistics, I think we can skip it pretty fast because this uh, is essentially our baseline regression, but without control firm size, without control firm ownership type. So what we did here is the first step is we're using, basically what we're using is kind of a, you know, Zangales, uh, uh, you know, Raghu uh, Zangales framework, right? This is an investment Q relationship. That's what we are doing, okay? Augmented uh, uh, investment Q regression, okay? This is our baseline regression. What we find here is that the turnover uh, or the pre-turnover dummy is negatively associated with uh, investment, firm investment, okay? And then the post-turnover dummy is actually positively associated with the investment, but only for the state-owned enterprises. It's actually negatively associated with the investment of the non-state-owned enterprises, okay? So that's our baseline regression. So what uh, this table takes us, it says that uh, before the turnover, all the company reduce investment, right? This is kind of the supporting the hypothesis that because of political uncertainty, because uh, company don't know whether Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton will take office, right, so reduce investment, okay? And then in China's setting, what happened is after the political turnover finished, uh, the firm's going to increasing investment, but mainly the increasing of the investment is driven by the state-owned enterprises, okay? And this second test, we tested this, what we call the crowding out effect. So because of the wedging, right, we know there is a wedge. The first regression show there is a wedge. Second, we try to show the wedging is increasing, right? So this is crowding out. So what essentially we did is basically uh, using this turnover times uh, dummy times uh, the ownership dummy. Because what we want to show is that it, uh, uh, the state-owned companies, their investment crowd out private investment, okay? Why is this so is because, uh, well, as we know, the state-owned enterprises, they have uh, uh, access to bank loan, right? They have access to market entry. They have access to uh, government concession contracts, right? But all these ones will squeeze 
the investment opportunity of private firms. Okay? And so basically what we show here is that that's true, right? They seem to squeeze basically the private uh, uh, companies. Okay, private companies. Okay? And the second, uh, what are the consequences, right? We say, well, there is a crowd out. Second, uh, the question is, uh, what, 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 what what, air, what are the economic loss, right? We, we show that the, uh, the, the efficiency loss here, basically the investment Q relationship is, uh, is, going, to, is going to be uh, 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 lower or you know, reduced uh, after the turnover, after turnover. And this, uh, this investment Q relationship, uh, the, 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 the decreasing is more pronounced in the non-SOE or it's only significant negative in the non-SOE subsample. Now, what I'm saying is basically uh, state-owned enterprise increasing investment, okay? But they may not affect their investment efficiency. But really the one suffering is uh, the non-state-owned enterprises. The companies who don't have connection, you know, they, they have difficulty in getting uh, bank loans, right? These firms suffer uh, in, in terms of their uh, efficiency uh, drops, efficiency drops. Okay, so this kind of these is, 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 is the, the undesired consequence, economic loss. Uh, we did a, a battery of robustness uh, tests. The reason is because uh, people ask us whether there is a heterogeneous, sorry, there is a reverse causality or endogeneity problem. So what we did, we're looking at at least three sets of the uh, tests. Okay, some are very simple tests. For example, we're looking at uh, uh, the, not the governor, but the party secretary. But there are other criticism. They say Bo Xilai is uh, the party secretary, not the governor. He has more power. He is more responsible for the econo economic growth. Okay, uh, for those guys, if you don't familiar with this uh, this political saga, you know, welcome to Google Bo Xilai. You will find a very interesting setting here. So what we find is basically the party secretary has no, uh, not much impact, but uh, rather it's more, uh, it's more. They have some impact for SOE, but they have no impact for the. For the for the for the private firms, okay. So the the results are more driven by the party. Uh, sorry, the provincial governor. Oh, she was party secretary or He's a party secretary of Chongqing, not the governor. The more That's right. Well, there are a lot of people saying the party secretary is more powerful. But you're saying that the impact on investment is on the is, is governor because well, fiduciarily, the governor is in charge of economic affairs. Party secretary is in charge of political kind of uh, stuff, but that's a sort of fiduciary. Really. In, in the reality, there are a lot of uh, you know, infight. Um, and what we find is uh, the, this phenomenon is much stronger in the turnover type, which is normal turnover, in the turnover uh, where the politician is uh, less educated, have low, no degree, have no college degree. And these guys also are born, born locally. So this is the province they govern, we found that this new governor, if they are born in the local, in the same governor province they govern, uh, this the phenomenon is stronger. And then the age, the governor is typically, we found that this phenomenon is stronger when the governor is aged between 50 and 60. After 60, they, they're more likely to retire. Before 60, they don't have much uh, authority. So that sort of thing we're arguing, okay? Channels, right? Uh, what happened? So, uh, you know, we, we submit, just submit this paper to JFQA a couple of months ago, right? The referee, I mean, this is uh, the, the what, uh, I mean, not, we haven't received a referee report, but this is what uh, uh, some of the questions uh, people asked us to address. So what are the channels, right? We don't have bank loan data, but what we can do is look at the firm leverage because uh, they say, why, why, why state-owned companies increasing investment? Well, probably because uh, the politician asked them to do so. But the politician needed to give something, right? So what do they give them? Cheap loans. So we're looking at the firm leverage. We found that it's increasing after turnover, okay? And then we also find that they're increasing after the, the employment. So what we see here is for the state-owned enterprises, there's a in significant increase in leverage after the polit politician, the governor, took over. There's also, they seem to hire much more employees after the new governor took over 
in that province. Okay, so that obviously seems to be very, very, very uh, economically significant. Okay. And then we did a little robust test with uh, uh, some other approach, right? We using match the sample, uh, we using uh, whatever unexpected turnover. We did uh, quite a few. I mean, the results is always uh, pretty uh, robust, pretty robust. So, what's the takeaway of this uh, uh, of this paper? Right? Hopefully, we 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 show more because uh, I think you know after the U.S. election, many people are also worried about the you know. Uh, you know, un unexpected politician when they took over, what would happen, right? Whether it's for good or for bad. What do we show in this non-election democratic economy? Uh, what what happened, like China, right, emerging market? What happened is that, that uh, political turnover seemed to have the side effect of the uh, crowding out between the public firm, public owned, sorry, state owned companies and the private firms. And the private firm experiencing uh, investment inefficiency or investment loss, efficiency loss. And this uh, uh, is seemed to be driven by the politicians' uh, political agenda, try to uh, make their, improving their own KPI. And, and that's what we, we, we basically show. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Any questions, if there's any? Even though I, yeah, please. Uh, any, please. Yeah. I didn't uh, raise a question. Let me serve myself. Oh, sorry, it's uh, Ravi first, please. Yeah, I, I got one here. <clears throat> so uh, my question is uh, related to Guanxi. Um, right. So the relationship between the party secretary and the private enterprises and the SOEs. So um, my understanding is that what is called kickbacks here is in the form of Guanxi in China. True. So, if they support SOEs, how do they get re, you know, paid from that versus supporting private enterprises? Okay, good question, right? This is what we're looking at, the local SOE. The local SOE, the CEO, the chairman is appointed by the local governor. So, there is a direct influence uh, of the local SOE. But for the central, you know, central level SOE, they are appointed by central level uh, asset management, state asset management company. So, there's less direct of the influence. Uh, Guanxi here is very important. Uh, we, we're thinking this is uh, more direct because you know, I can influence in the appointment decision of, of the executive, of the chairman, right? So I can influence in your corporate decision directly. There's a more subtle point, which is Guanxi. We didn't look at. But uh, that's definitely something uh, much more interesting. Right? So I think that, that is something we should look at as well in the future. Uh, so quickly, I'll just uh, go into three points. First is, uh, uh, so one of my, uh, so a few of my colleagues at HKUSD, they show that uh, cash subsidies are the important source in which government finances these firms and not leverage. So you may want to look at cash subsidies. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you're using the SysMar data, right? Yeah. So they have uh, cash subsidies there. Yeah. The second is, uh, do you have any results on capital misallocation? Uh, I think that would go well with your investment efficiency story if you're able to show that there's capital misallocation. Right. And finally, uh, as you claim, uh, are there any results for market reactions on these turnovers? There is uh, one recent uh, JFE or JFE paper, I think they're looking at the Chongqing, what happened after the Bo was right, arrested, right? Right, right. right. Negative, that's from John Wei. Uh, yeah, negative Wally. value impact, yeah. Uh, uh, cash subsidiary, I will look at that one. Yeah. I think there's one more question, right? I'm helping myself. Any, uh, okay, sure. Um, so if I understand correctly, in the econometrics, you're doing a, a pooled OLS regression. Is, is, so, and, but you have turnover dates, right? True. So then why not just use the dates and do an event study methodology and look at the effect of that on investment on even match firms and essentially then you can compare the SOEs and the non-SOEs when you're matching on all other covariates. We did but that. the only thing different is the ownership. And we, then we you that. have the clean dates and yeah. use that as the break to do the event study for the effect of sure. the political turnover, which might be a much cleaner way of getting uh, as close as possible a causal effect of the turnover on okay. investment 
as opposed to doing a pulled OLS. And sure. the second minor point is I would definitely stay away from using, even if you stick to pulled OLS, uh, using GDP growth okay. or any country level features because these don't vary at, at the firm level, which is essentially your main independent variable. So yeah, we're using sales growth of the firm. We control for the provincial GDP growth. So I would just stick to just sales growth and not sure. do any macro variables at all. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. So there's one more question. Okay. Yeah, basically a fundamental question. Uh, you said that these resources are politically motivated. True. To create some demand or some jobs. Yeah. After the new government takes over. Yeah. So basically this is misallocation of capital and inefficient uh, allocation of capital. Yeah. That means that the production which comes out of su such investment True. should not be competitive in the world market. So is that uh, other way of saying that it proves the point or allegation on China that it kind of manipulates the prices? Yeah, I think that uh, that's a good point. Whether we agree whether Donald Trump using certain way of promoting economic growth, say taxation versus just give the SOE, you know, some resource ask them to scale their investment, right? In China, what we observe is politicians often, they just give, uh, you know, some of the, give the SOE some of the resource, ask or, or contract, let them scale up their investment. They don't use other market uh, uh, approach to, to, to incentivize uh, the, their investment. They rather they just uh, interfere this process. So that's what I, way I think we want to say. It's, it's, it's not, it's non-market approach here. That's what we want to, yeah. Can I? Um, do you see stock prices for these companies? Because we would love to know when the party secretary gets put into jail, what happens to the SOEs and the non-SOEs, yeah. abnormal returns, abnormal squared returns, you know, the whole machinery of looking at this phenomenon through the lens of stock prices. Is that something may maybe other papers have already done? Yeah, that's a JFE recently. Let's see there's an active impact. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, people, and uh, thank you for a great conference uh, so far.